Hello and welcome back to Shenzhen. We're going to do a rubbish audio thing today. So, a contract comes in to build a piece of audio kit. Sounds fun, right? I've always liked audio. The client promises their, that their little box will deliver crisp highs and booming lows, all in perfect balance. Then I see their advent, their advert happens to include the much maligned, much what? The much vaunted algorithm that powers this thing. Ah, go on, take a look for yourself. I should mention, I put a copy of said advert on your desk. Just looking in the pile of papers marked supplemental data, since that seemed most appropriate. I should also mention that we still have to do this, as sad as it is. Work's working on, and even when you have to help a dodgy American company market rubbish like this, at a premium for auto piles. I fucked that up. I fucked that whole thing up. So, uh, let's bring this up. Come here. Come over here so they can see it. Okay. So, supplemental data, I think, is way at the bottom. Pretty sure. So, what we're going to see, if we can find it, There, sound blast. I think. No, that's not right. What the fuck is it? Harmonic maximization. Son of a bitch. Okay. There. This fucker. So audio out equals audio in negative 50 times 4 plus 50. So this is the this is the uh, formula we need to apply. So audio comes in, audio is out. That's simple enough. But if they press this button, we need to apply the formula. Okay. That should be pretty easy, actually. I'm not. I'm not too concerned about that. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to have. This isn't, yeah, that doesn't work. So we're gonna have to have two chips on here. How are we gonna do this? So we need to do This isn't going to work. Test if that's equal to 100. If it is... Sub... 50... Mod 4... That'll do that. The problem is that's supposed equal to 100. 
If yes, move 100 to X1 and sleep on. So that's all I need. But the problem is this is going to jam. This is definitely going to jam. So yeah, I need to definitely rethink this. I mean, I think we're close to the idea, we just had that jam. And I tell you what, uh, let's, um, let's copy all this. data that we can use. So, uh, move, uh, move the DAT, and here we're going to test the DAT, and that might do it. retained some of this. Uh, we didn't do it very well. We definitely could have done that cheaper with less lines of code and with less power usage, but uh, but we did it, and I'm happy about that. So you won't hear me complaining. Let's see what we got. Holy crap! This thing is awesome. I helped one of these babies up to my stereo at home and it blew the speakers clear off. Does the job, no question. Amazing. Dear consumer, if you bought a self-driving car in the past five years and your car was involved in a rogue loop incident, you may be entitled to compensation under a settlement to a class action lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of California. A rogue loop a rogue loop is defined by the court as a state where a self-driving car appears to disregard humans and continues to drive around, refueling itself when necessary, and ignoring orders to stop. If you believe your self-driving drive... What? If you believe that your self-driving car has experienced this condition in the last five years, please contact us for more information on how to submit a claim. The Law Offices of Steve Stephen Holman all right, so that's fantastic. Uh, happy with this episode. Uh, rubbish audio thing is done. Uh, next time we'll be doing an infrared sensor. And this prototyping new idea, this is one here. Uh, this is something else I kind of gave up on. So, I don't know if I'll just skip over that or if maybe I'll give it a shot. Since things are going pretty nicely here, maybe we could do something simple with that. And maybe make breakout if we can. I doubt it. But uh, we can certainly give it a try and see what happens. But again, thank you all so very much for watching this one. And I will see you on the next one. <laughs>